How does rice remove moisture from a cell phone? No, 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 no. Can we just please stop with the rice fixes wet cell phones thing already? It doesn't, and you're wasting perfectly good rice. Besides that, you'll probably introduce smaller particles of broken rice grains into your phone, causing a whole different set of problems. These articles keep getting into my feed somehow, and I feel obligated to point out that this is how superstition perpetuates itself. Someone gives you bad advice, you follow it, and get lucky somehow, therefore, bad advice now makes sense. Causation does not equal correlation. If some people want to believe that rice fixes their phone, their lucky shirt helped win the game, or that breaking a mirror means seven years bad luck, okay, I know that nothing I say will help, but for everyone else, think about this for a minute. It's not just water that harms your phone. It's the other things in the water, like minerals, chlorine, salt, sugar, uh, depending on where the moisture came from, any number of different chemical compounds. Tap water has all sorts of stuff in it besides H2O. And even if water inside evaporates, it leaves behind other things that cause corrosion, sometimes over a long period of time. There's no amount of rice that will help remove these because they need to be physically cleaned. If not, you're really just hoping to get lucky in that the water didn't make it far enough inside of your phone to cause any damage in the first place. Now, this is an actual quote from the article that I got. Rice is carbohydrates. It's starch, and the starch molecules can soak up a huge amount of water, so I suspect, suspect, by putting your phone in a jar of dry rice, the rice carbs pull the water out of the air around each rice particle. That's Chris Smith, the naked scientist. Uh, and there are no credentials after his name, though, so... I'm not sure what kind of scientist he is other than a naked one, I guess. Hi, I'm Mike from Go Cell Phone Repair, and if you enjoy this video, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon for more tech news and tutorials in the future. Apple is reportedly buying Shazam for $400 million, according to Recode. Not a huge surprise, because that's what big corporations generally do. They find something that they want to use, now or in the future, and they buy the company that owns it. So what will Apple do with Shazam and this technology? Well, there seems to be a lot of speculation about using it for their planned augmented reality applications in the future, possibly even creating their own version of Google Lens. Also of importance is the fact that Apple owning Shazam could have a big impact on music services like Spotify, where Shazam has, at least up until now, sent over a million clicks per day. All that to be directed to iTunes once the deal is finalized, at least one would think. If you've ever wished that there was a Shazam for singing, humming, or whistling a tune, there is. Or there are. Midomi and Musipedia are a couple of the options available for anyone who remembers what a song sounded like, but didn't have Shazam on them at the time. I didn't know that until I looked it up today. I really thought that I had the perfect million dollar app idea, but nope, already been done. Will Samsung still accept Galaxy Note 7s as part of their recall program uh, without a receipt? Well, the page is still there, and we're going to find out for sure tomorrow when I call them during the weekly Monday afternoon Tech Talk live stream. Back in December of last year, I recorded a video with Samsung support on the phone and while the conversation was simple enough, we didn't find out until a couple of months later that if you do want to get your refund check processed faster or at all, uh, maybe, uh, you'll want to give them a follow-up call after you send the device in, make sure they got it, and they're processing that refund. So if you've been waiting for the Note 8's release and want to turn in your old device now, you should be able to do so by calling this number. I will confirm that tomorrow. Jailbreaking might be making a comeback thanks to Google. If you didn't already know what jailbreaking is, let me put it this way. Your iPhone can do a million and one different things, but if Apple gave you everything right out of the box, then they wouldn't have a whole lot to sell you in the future. Uh, jailbreaking got around many of the barriers built into iOS, allowing, at different points in time, things like switching carriers, installing game emulators, avoiding tethering fees, and yes, even pirating software, which you should not do. But I'm only here to say what's possible and not make decisions for anyone. Yes, some of the restrictions placed on iOS are for your security. Certainly not all of them, and probably not the majority, but some of them. If you really want freedom though, you're probably using Android anyways. 
It's a trade-off like many things these days, more freedom or more security, you decide. But at least you have some choices when it comes to your phone. Google researcher Ian Beer tweeted on Tuesday, if you are interested in bootstrapping iOS 11 kernel security research, keep a research only device on 11.1.2 or below part one TFPO release soon. If you already have a jailbroken device, keep in mind that upgrading may mean that you will lose that option and there's a good chance that the jailbreak for iOS 11, if and when it becomes available, might be tethered, which is no fun when you reboot your phone. But I'm really starting to think that it's not something most people ever do, at least not intentionally. How to rip the mics out of your MacBook and iPhone? Why the heck would you want to do that? It seems that more and more people are becoming aware of the potential misuse of their phones and computers' cameras. Even Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg seems to be concerned about being caught on FaceTime unexpectedly. In an article for Wired.com, the subject of skilled hackers being able to turn on your phone's microphone and listen in on conversations taking place in whatever room your phone happens to be in came up. When you think about it, the chances of your phone's camera being pointed directly at anything important seems a lot less likely than your phone being present in a room during a private conversation. If you're concerned about it, there are a few options. You could take your phone to a professional and have the mics removed and then just plug in a headset whenever you want to make a phone call. Uh, by the way, there are three or four different microphones inside of your smartphone depending on which model you have. You might try a do-it-yourself modification using, oh, I don't know, maybe one of the tutorials on my channel? Or you can try another technique described in the article, which is cutting the wires off of an old set of headphones and then plugging the jack into your phone, which can trick the phone into shutting off the microphones because it thinks that you're using headphones. If you try something like this, make sure that the exposed wires are safely separated and insulated because if they touch together, you can end up causing some serious damage to your phone. The truth is that if someone really wants to hear what you're saying, that last one can be circumvented, but most of us don't need to be concerned as hackers usually stick to easy targets. Of course, if you're being singled out, uh, you might want to find a more secure way to communicate. As far as disabling the mic on your MacBook, well, that's an easier one that requires removing some screws from the bottom, removing the panel, and unplugging a cable. As always, perform these kinds of procedures at your own risk, or better yet, find a professional to help you out. And yes, this will almost definitely void your warranty. And on that note, uh, using data that can be collected by an app developer without your consent, researchers have figured out a way to pinpoint your location without accessing GPS information. So last week I talked about how Google had been collecting information that could determine your location even when the location services on your phone were turned off until someone pointed that out and then they agreed to stop. Uh, now code can be built into any innocent looking app and figure out where you are even without accessing your location services? I don't know what comes next, but it's getting pretty creepy these days. Apparently, using your phone's compass, air pressure readings, a weather report, and some maps, they were able to determine the location of a device that was loaded with a test app called PinMe. If any of this concerns or interests you, feel free to read the article for yourself. Links are in the video description, along with the links for all of the information sources that are contained in this video. Apple Inc.'s upcoming 6.1 inch phone might not support this big feature. It's wireless charging. You really didn't need a clickbait title there, guys. This is unfortunate. It took so long to finally get here and with plans for a metal housing coming back to at least one iPhone model next year, so we've been told, it looks like at least some of Apple's customers might not have that option anymore. Well, we kind of assumed that the SE2 would still have a metal back, but which other iPhone might go back to the older style? Rumor has it that the 6.1 inch iPhone planned for next year will have an aluminum housing instead of a glass back, which would of course make wireless charging difficult if not impossible. Since glass breaks so easily, the metal design might be a good move to prevent customers from needing a ridiculously difficult and expensive rear glass replacement, or they could just attach it with something that isn't such a pain to remove. I still think that putting the receiver under a bigger Apple logo would make sense, but why would they listen to me? The real question though is whether loyal Apple customers will be put off by Apple removing a feature from one of its products. Oh, never mind. I'm Mike from Go Cell Phone Repair, and that's been 10 Minutes of Tech. I'll be back Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for the weekly live stream, and again on Thursday at 6 p.m. for another one right here on YouTube. 
Uh, until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.